So finally, uh, the, the final topic that I'd like to touch upon concerning the flipped classroom for the first week is to talk about the challenges of flipping the classroom. And one of the challenges that we face is that oftentimes students are very unfamiliar with the, the flipped classroom approach. Students are typically, you know, uh, used to having uh, the lecture uh, format and they go to a classroom expecting the lecturer to, to speak for an hour or so. And therefore, when this experience disappears and when, therefore, the, student, the teacher no longer, in, you know, gives a lecture in a classroom, it's a disorientating experience for a lot of students. And then students also are, uh, are, are quite unsure what their role should be in a flipped classroom approach. They need to be able to realize that they have to have con better control of, of the learning journey. They need to put in, you know, take more responsibility for their own learning and ensure that they actually access uh, educational resources that you have placed in Moodle, for example. So th that is one of the challenges, you know, trying to get students more acquainted with the flipped classroom approach. So that is something that we cannot ignore. We cannot just, you know, flip the classroom without explaining to the students what's going on, because that will cause problems. In addition, the other challenge, obviously, is that for a lot of the, you know, educators and university lecturers, for example, a lot of us are not really familiar with the flipped classroom approach. So, and, you know, the idea about flipping the classroom oftentimes clashes with their own experiences. It needs, you know, a change of mindset, a change of attitudes as well. So that's, again, a challenge, like, because in a flipped classroom approach, the teacher just, you, you, you know, as a teacher, you kind of change your role into one as a guide on the side or a, as a facilitator. You cease to have a central presence in the classroom uh, in a flipped approach because you will no longer be doing a lecture and, you know, just having students there listen to you talk for an hour or so. Instead, you actually put more power to students for them to determine, you know, what kind of engaging and active learning activities they would like to get into during the face-to-face uh, -face time or during the online synchronous session. So that, again, you know, there is a, 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 a challenge as far as teachers are concerned concerning the mindset, their experiences, and their attitudes. The third challenge, obviously, is that it's, you know, it can actually be difficult to create short and engaging instructional videos. In the first place, a lot of us, you know, have not really been trained to become actors or, you know, good presenters on, on videos. I mean, I'm one of those who's not, who's not really been, you know, into that type of thing. And it takes a while to, to get used to it. It takes a while to, to talk to a camera when there's no one watching you. It takes a while to, to, to you know, know that, you know, you're being recorded. And for some, it might be natural, but, you know, it's not as spontaneous and as natural as, you know, having students face you. Here, in, in, a, in a recorded session, you're actually just talking to a camera, kind of you're talking to yourself. And that poses a challenge. So we have got to learn to overcome that particular challenge as well. And the fourth challenge that we can think of is, you know, how to be able to explain key concepts clearly and concisely in bite-sized chunks. So you don't have the luxury of talking for an hour. You might have to make sure that the instructional videos that you're able to develop, you know, you, you get that done in about five minutes or seven minutes at the most. I mean, and I can tell you, you know, I'm kind of guilty about that now because sometimes, you know, the kind of lectures I'm giving you uh, move on to maybe 10 minutes. And in a sense, I, I deliberately did that. I, de I deliberately did not edit this to show that, you know, who says that this has to be perfected? At the end of the day, you know, the important thing is, Students engage with the resources. If, if it's, you know, if it goes beyond seven minutes, okay, we'll, we'll keep that in mind. But, you know, it's not like at the end of the world just because you kind of overshot the expectation that the video shouldn't go beyond seven minutes. Now, the, the other challenge is, you know, how do we ensure that we do not sacrifice course content? Because, you know, you're meant to be doing them in, you know, five minutes. And what if there was more that you want to, to, to talk about? So in that case, again, that is a challenge, and therefore you have got to uh, integrate into the into the learning experience the possibility that it will not just be you who will be the source of information and knowledge. It perhaps it could be about you know students engaging with some reading materials. It could be with students looking at videos or even blogs or wikis that are available, and so the students on their own have got to be able to access those educational resources to build their learning. Everything does not have to come from the teacher. And uh, the other challenge is, you know, 
we have to be able to design in-class active learning activities. Because if we do not think about or reflect about what happens during the class sessions, if we do not consciously think about what we should be doing during the, during the online synchronous sessions, you know, everything is going to turn out to be flat. Everything is going to turn out to be very unengaging and boring so that, you know, you stare at each other and knowing, you know, not, not knowing what to do. So it's very important that the teach one of the challenges of the teachers must be to think through what do I, what am I meant to achieve when I meet my students either face to face or during the, you know, the online synchronous sessions. And finally, the other challenge is, you know, how does a teacher facilitate active learning, uh, active learning in an online synchronous session? It is a distinct challenge. It is not easy to, you know, to facilitate this because unlike in a traditional face-to-face -face session where you could just, you know, you could smile at students, you know, pat them, walk around, you know, engage with them meaningfully because they're just in front of you. Here, in an online synchronous session, it's even very possible you don't really get to see them, their faces, because, you know, because of bandwidth problems, their videos must be shut down. So it can be very difficult. So you have to think about, you know, what are, what can I do to get the students to, to engage more? And you will hopefully be able to pick up, you know, some of the activities that we could do, some of the strategies that we could design once we do the workshop uh, in the coming days, because we will try to, you know, I mean, my job will be to try to get you to engage more meaningfully with the learning content during these online synchronous sessions. And, you know, so you hopefully by, by me modeling the flipped classroom approach, you will be able to pick up some ideas on how on your own you can facilitate online synchronous sessions at some point.